Hi all, my name is Nicholas Maple and I work at ACMS with Joe and Kuda. The title of my short presentation is International Protection in Southern Africa, UNHCR and Regime Shifting in the Urban Space. Based on recent and ongoing research, I'm going to talk to four points. The Southern African context and the global refugee regime, South Africa's approach to receiving refugees, the approach of UNHCR in terms of urban spaces and refugee camps in Southern Africa, and the effect these approaches are having on how refugees are viewed in urban spaces such as Johannesburg. So first, a quick word on the global refugee regime. Given the time constraints, while the regime is made up of many component, components, including international legal frameworks, I'm only going to talk to one of its main core elements, namely the regime's key global actor, UNHCR. In terms of Southern Africa and refugee movements, while the region does not host a vast population seen in neighboring regions, it is home to a significant number of refugees. For example, UNHCR reported 1.1 million refugees and asylum seekers in the region in 2020. In addition, many refugees have traditionally traveled long distances to arrive in the region. For example, Somali and Ethiopian migrants and asylum seekers traveling along the Southern Corridor to South Africa via Kenya, Tanzania, and other Southern African countries. To assist states in hosting these populations, the global refugee regime has been associated with refugee protection in the region since the 1960s. Broadly, this assistance has taken a number of approaches, from promoting international standards for states to adopt when receiving and welcoming refugees, to the role of UNHCR in offering protection and assistance in organized camps and settlements. Certainly since the 1960s, UNHCR has been deeply involved in the architecture of refugee reception by establishing and running refugee camps for host states. Yet refugee movement in Southern Africa for some time now has been following regional and global trends of urbanization with more and more refugees rejecting camps to self-settle in border areas, cities and towns. As such, many of my colleagues at ACMS have been questioning the continuing relevance of UNHCR and by extension the global refugee regime in urban spaces in Southern Africa for some time now. Turning specifically to South Africa, the country is a bit of an outlier in the region and the wider continent in terms of how the state receives refugees. While most states in Southern Africa will require refugees to reside in camps, at least in law, South Africa permits refugees freedom of movement and the ability to settle anywhere in the country. Although, particularly in the last decade or so, I would argue movement is continually being restricted by national and local level policies, which, whether, which either confines refugees to specific areas of the city or is removing access to cities altogether. Turning to UNHCR, the agency takes quite a hands-off approach on the ground in the urban space in South Africa. The agency, along with the host state, essentially adopts a non-interventionist policy. This means that if a refugee moves to a city such as Johannesburg, there is an expectation on behalf of the refugee to be self-sufficient. Essentially, when refugees exercise their agency and move to urban areas, they are also moving outside the confines of the global refugee regime. Indeed, there is an assumption within many in UNHCR that if refugees required international protection or humanitarian assistance, they would have stopped at a refugee camp in a neighboring state in the region, rather than continuing their journeys to the southernmost country in Africa. The implication of these findings for refugees in Southern Africa is that for them to gain access to the regime and by, extent, by extension international protection, they often have to give up their right to freedom of movement and remain in a refugee camp. This construction of an re urban refugee as self-reliant also has the effect of conferring sufficient agency onto the, to the refugee to relinquish the host state and UNHCR of many key obligations imposed by the global refugee regime involving protection and integration. As a result of this overarching approach by UNHCR, 
in combination with similar non-interventionist state-based policies, most urban refugees are left to negotiate protection and find alternative forms of reception at the local and community level. While many refugees choose to avoid state and international actors and instead self-settle and remain invisible in cities, they have little choice in the matter. Finally, this conceptualization of the urban refugee means that refugees are regularly confused with other migrants in urban spaces in South Africa. Indeed, I would suggest we are seeing what Alex Betts refers to as regime shifting, with urban refugees being moved from national refugee frameworks to national migration frameworks. Let's suggest that states are frequently attempting to move a problem by relocating the politics of a given issue from one regime to another by attempting to respond to all African migrants through the national immigration framework, whether by design or influence, the South African government is gradually delinking refugees from the, their refugee status and from the global regime. In doing so, refugees are being shifted away from the refugee label towards a generic and often illegal migrant label. By essentially abstaining from engagement in the urban space, and reinforcing the construction of urban refugees as entirely self-reliant. UNHCR is in danger of tacitly affirming this approach to refugee reception. And ultimately, these approaches are reinforcing a conceptualization of who is a refugee, i.e. a passive immobile victim in need of international support, and where they should reside, i.e. refugee camps. I'll stop there, but happy to discuss this further if, if anyone has any questions. Many thanks.